There and welcome to Home Wizards, where we love to help improve the spaces you call home. We call it improving your home and improving your life. That's right? what we do, yeah. Hey, Eric Stroma. I'm Eric Stroma. Uh, yeah. And I'm Cindy Dole, and thanks for hanging with us. And, you know, there's so much you can do to the place you call home, but I'm sure that you would love to do it and save money. That's right. And so with that, we talk about some ways to, well, they're trade secrets, but just because it looks great doesn't mean that it has to cost you a fortune. No, and there's some there's some things that that you can do to really kind of extend, expand and extend the money that you want to spend on something, but also expand the area that you thought was kind of unremodelable, mm-hmm. if you will. Unremodelable. How do you like that? <laughs> right. Like, it's another home wizard's term. That's right. Unremodel. Yeah, I can't even repeat it. It's so it's so made up. <laughs> but but. Uh, I think a lot of times people look at doorways first and foremost and go, man, I, I, we've got a low uh, egress as we go into our living room or something like that. Or, mm-hmm. or what are we going to do? Everything's squared off. I wish it felt different. And and a lot of times people don't consider the fact that arch doorways can really make a huge difference in softening a room. It's the first thing you notice when you enter a room. And if if you if you wanted to do something like that, it's really not that difficult. It's simply converting a square or rectangular opening into an archway, basically. It sounds like it'd be tricky. It does, I know, but it it really isn't. You're aw- filling it out, kind of a thing. You really you really are. You're you're just taking the sides and and extending them down a little bit lower on either side. So you know the top of the door jam is going to remain the same height. But you're gonna you're gonna bring down the the edges on either side to create that little nice gentle arch. But our roof is not gonna come falling down on. No, this. heck no, it's not. <laughs> no, no, because you're gonna you're gonna keep the same exact framing, right? But you're gonna then round out the edges of. For, for example, say you have like a five foot opening that's a perfect square, and you mm-hmm. wanted to make it an archway. What you do is you create these little, um, you know build it out with either drywall or they actually sell a drywall kit where it's it's a band of plastic that goes up and around from the side of the door jam up onto the top and you're using plywood pieces to cut an angle with those hmm. and then you're kind of putting them in the corner of that square frame on either side and giving and that's what's giving you that rounded look oh and then you fill in between those pieces of plywood with with lumber that'll kind of round it out uh, and then you put these bands on that are plastic drywall edging that that kind of creates the rounded aspect to the drywall, right? It's really and then attractive. You, and then you and then you mud it, and uh-huh. then you're using that template that you created from the plywood for your round. So it's a really simple fix. It'll take uh, and you, how do you take you take you about five hours. How do you create? How do you get the uh, the impact of molding? To make that round edge, because well, that's that's the pop is yeah, that molding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and again, they sell molding that has that nice gentle curve. They to do. It. They do. Yeah. Oh. Or you can use, uh, you know, basically cut little pie shapes out of each little, maybe every six eight inches, and then you're you're essentially just fanning turning, it out, fanning it out as uh-huh. you go, and then filling it in with with uh, either Bondo or some kind of drywall mud. That so, sounds a little more complicated. That's a little more complicated. But you can but buy the arch molding. You can buy molding. the arch molding, yeah, absolutely. And what's the price point on this, you think? Oh, that's under 100 bucks. Really? Oh, heck yeah. No way. Yes way. Because I think that's a huge improvement. That has a lot of um, bang for the buck, I think. I think it does too. Because it really gives it that rich feel, and it and almost it opens up the room more, right? Yeah, it does. It just like so, a picture it, window. Any, anytime you have you know a rounded edge on things it, it softens it so if you if you're kind of looking for something to do that that dresses up and makes it a little more uh, you know it, it can go one of two ways it can either go more formal and have that classic look of, of old architecture or it can soften something that's too square mm-hmm. and just make it feel more cozy but it really frames the room that you're going into it almost gives you kind of this architectural perspective as you're walking down a hall or you know you're now going to enter that family room or whatever it is that's exactly right looks pretty i like it and you then you could paint the molding a different color paint the molding white and then do your wall color and and uh you know the wider the molding the more um you know, kind of classic it looks, and the smaller the molding or non-existent molding, you get in, in a little bit more of a, a modern design. So mode. if you're just a beginner DIYer, we can do this. 
I want you to promise me that you'll try it if you're a beginner because it's really doable. And you can't mess it up. If you do it wrong, proportions are wrong, it's very easy to tear out. It's only a couple hours of time. And what kind of a tool do we use to cut into the archway that we have, our, our square door? Well, you're not, you're not, you're not, not cutting cut. into it at all. You're just, you're just taking the, the original trim off. And that's it. And all the casing and off, and then, you're, and then you're amending it with those plywood pieces that you cut those rounds on. But wait, what if we want to make it a little wider? Can we make Well, it? then you got to get into hacking out some, some framing, and that's a little more difficult. Okay, so we're just going to amend the existing. Yeah, keep okay. what you have if it's a wider doorway, and you're going to add the, the arch feel to it. Really pretty. Yeah. By the way, if you happen to have, because like we did for the longest time, we had a double uh, door in the archway leading from one room to the next. So it was wider than your typical sure. door uh, arch. Yeah. So that'd be perfect because now you have a really big frame. That's exactly right. Oh, that that's would, nice. That would be the ideal look for this. And again, so remember, it's a square, and you're taking like triangular pieces of plywood and putting those up in the corners of the square so you'll have four of them. But then you're going to round those out with a reciprocating saw, and you're going to make one, and then you use that one as your template for all the other three. Mm -hmm. by tracing it on the other pieces of wood, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, that's yeah. a really pretty. Yeah. I mean, I you don't hear much about that, and no. that's a great look. Okay. It really is. Another thing I love, and they sell these kinds of shelves at things places like Ikea, but they're called like lac shelves, mm -hmm. and they look like they're floating, and they just come out of a Very wall. Very modern. Yeah. All that is, in, in, in this case that I'm going to talk about, is a like a piece of butcher block that you can buy, and then you're finding your stud and you're putting a, a, a threaded rod that's about 8 to 10 inches into a hole that you'll drill into the framing of your, of your kitchen, for example. Let's use that. So every 16 inches on center, you're going to have a, a framing stud. So you find a span maybe of about 4 feet, get your level out, and you draw a line where you want your shelf. And then you're going to find your studs in the wall. If you find one stud, then you're going to measure over 16 inches, and that'll that'll be the next one generally. An another way to find that stud is to just knock gently on the plaster or the drywall, and you can hear the different tone. So it's more of a hollow sound when you're when you're knocking between the studs, and it kind of gets tighter like a drum when you're getting near the wood. So that's another way to find and it. And I really like the look of butcher block versus there's so many really tacky-looking shelf options out there. It, right. It looks thin. It doesn't make your home look and feel as rich, and especially if you have a display like I collect old antique radios. And so we need something that has some heft to it but still looks elegant and, and clean lines so it can support a, a series of these radios. That's a great idea, yeah. That would and, be and, suitable? And I, and I like these shelves. Yeah, it would be perfectly suitable. I like them because they're floating. Mm -hmm. They t they don't take away from it's the not thing clunky. that you're displaying. Yeah, it's it's clean. Right. And yeah, like the floating idea, it's almost the focus is on the art, not the shelf. Right, so, so nice. you're going to drill into your stud. You're going to uh -huh. make about a three-quarter inch hole that'll match the size of that rod that's about eight inches long. You'll put the rod into the hole, and then that'll be sticking out from the wall. And then you'll do it, you know, two, four, eight feet wide, however, you, however wide you want yourself. For the other one that comes out, make sure it's level so two, two eight-inch rods are coming out of the wall. And then you're going to correlate that and drill the butcher block with the same size hole and literally just plug Slide it, it in, in. Uh -huh. right? Right. And then you can glue it with wood, with, with wood adhesive, glue. yeah, and then uh -huh. that'll stay on the uh, See, that's the that's the genius. That's what I need. Yeah. Because, you know, you see some of these shelves that have the hinges and all that and, you know, the corbels. I mean, that that's okay, but it starts to feel clunky after yeah, a while. I, I like how this is very lean and flush to the wall. Exactly. And butcher block is the best kind of wood, do you think? I think so, because it's, it's, uh, it's solid and rigid enough to support mm -hmm. only two places where it's going to be held. And then you don't see any of the brackets that you would see in traditional shelving, and it really makes it look great. So, and it's really what, it's, it's cheaper than the other kinds, right? Well, it's, it's, for what you get, it's, it's really inexpensive. And you can buy, a, you know, it comes in, you know, different lengths of, of a slab. Mm -hmm. And then you can go ahead and either cut it with a, a reciprocating saw, or they can cut it for you at the lumber yard, wherever you go. Give them the dimensions of your shelf, and they'll cut it off that piece of butcher block for you. I'm going to get that. Yeah, I, mean, I, I that want one. to do that. Yeah. I definitely. Okay. And then another great thing to do, you know, trim and molding around your doors and your baseboards can can be amended and changed out pretty easily, and it gives a tremendous impact. You know, if you have sort of builder series molding, one of the great things you can do is just to dress up that existing molding with something new. You know, you could get into things with 
plinth blocks at the bottom, mm-hmm. you know, and have those that, that old sort of Victorian era looking molding. Or you can do more modern streamlined trim and baseboard or the taller baseboard on the bottom. Mm-hmm. You know, anything that you can think of in terms of your design style, you know, by getting examples from architecture that you love, you can match it with the trim and the molding details that are in the house. That's always what gives you the look that you're going for. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? No, molding, I think, makes such a huge difference, especially I like thick, big molding. Right. I mean, I think it really makes a statement and, and makes the room just look so rich, and and I think it can make it look bigger, too. That I, I agree. And then if it's painted with a crisp white trim mm-hmm. color and then the wall color is different, it's just glorious. So so trip, changing out molding is very, very simple. You just pry it off the wall. And then if you're going to do something bigger, you don't have to worry about patching. You'll just go right over the place that you pulled the old molding off. And what you'll do is you'll, you know, tap a screwdriver in and you'll start to pry the moldings from the wall because it's usually only anchored with very thin nails. And what you want to first score it with a utility knife on the top so that that paint line is going to be um, uh, cut easily and it's not going to pull all the other plaster off the wall. So you always want to score for it. Before you pull anything off when it comes to molding. All right, well, hold the thought. We yeah. have more to talk about because we have a lot more of these great, easy, and low cost. Under 100 upgrades. bucks. Everything's under 100 bucks. This, it's easy, it's Absolutely. crazy, and it's low cost. Yeah. Home Wizards, Eric Stromer, Cindy Dole. We're back in just a moment. Welcome back. You're listening to Home Wizards. I'm Cindy Dole. Hey, I'm Eric Stromer. And we're learning about and talking about the many, many easy, breezy, low cost upgrades. Love the idea of the, uh, the shelving that you can do and uh, the molding changes, but how about using stock tile to change, well, some a bathroom area? Yeah, I mean, a lot of times people uh, are not aware of the fact that you can reorient and change the way you set tile. It doesn't always have to be on the square. It can be on the bias or on an angle, and that'll gussy up any grade of tile that you have. So it looks it looks fancy when it's on an angle, doesn't it? Oh, it sure it? does, yeah. So, so for example, you can do a shower where the bottom 42 inches are set square, and then at that point, at 42 inches, you'll add a little rail of tile, and then above that, you'll use that same tile, but you'll just orient it on the bias or on the angle. So it's starting with triangle pieces, right? From, mm-hmm. that, from that line and then building up from there following your straight grid. Is that hard, though, to follow the lines? I mean, do you think the people, if they aren't really artistically inclined, that somehow the, uh, well, it's not <laughs> well, <laughs> the lines well, going up? Well, t- the... tiling is, you know, is a very difficult thing to do if you're trying to do fancy patterns. But having said that, uh, if your preparation's done correctly and you have square areas that you're working in, it's very easy to follow those lines. So it's again, it's all de- determined with preparation. If you're going to take on something like a shower, there's always waterproofing elements that you have to deal with, like tarring or hot mopping the base before you build it up from there and making sure that it's watertight because, you know, there's nothing worse than creating a shower that doesn't hold water correctly. So there are some things that are very difficult, but if it's something like a floor tile job or putting tile on a kitchen backsplash, that is a really doable project for any homeowner. And and if you want to just use an inexpensive tile but kind of change up how you orient it, either if it's a running bond pattern like brick mm-hmm. or if it's set on an angle or the bias or complicated patterns, uh, it can really dress up an inexpensive tile. And I do like the look of doing kind of a combo mambo. You can do where, combo mambo. Because Papa loves mambo. Papa do. I love how, you know, for, let's say it is in the shower or wherever it is, you're 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 setting the tile in two different ways. So the lower half, let's say, is set the traditional, you know, horizontal way. Right. And then you have some kind of a, I don't know, some kind of a board in between to some yeah, molding a little border, yeah. divider. And then yeah. the upper half, whether it's a backsplash in your kitchen or in the shower, whatever, yeah. now that's the one that's at the angle that you're talking that's about. That's exactly right. Like diamonds. Diamonds, exactly Really right. cool. It it's makes beautiful. it look expensive. It may, yeah, it makes it look expensive. And then, you know, and if you're not interested in taking on the tile project, but you're doing the tile job with, with a contractor doing it, you can suggest that to save money so you don't have to get into buying a tremendous amount of specialty pieces because that's where it gets very expensive. Now, i got to tell you that the, some company sent me this product, and we tried it, and it didn't seem like it worked very well. Have you had experience with it's supposed to be the quick and dirty solution to setting tile or whatever as a backsplash, and it's this adhesive... Uh, almost like wallpaper and you just you just set the adhesive to the wall and you're supposed to literally just stick the tiles to that and then you put a little bit of the um 
the molding around it, and then so, you're done. So that gives you a template to Suppose, set it on? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, it sounds interesting. I'd like to see more. Mm-hmm. Having done that for so many years uh, as a tile guy, setting intricate patterns, uh, there really aren't any, I probably aren't many shortcuts because it's all about the preparation, like anything mm-hmm. with paint or, or whatever you're doing for home improvement projects. So, uh, yeah, I'd be interested to see it. I mm-hmm. mean, anything that would make it potentially easier is better. You know, okay. you know another thing you can do that's inexpensive and has a big, tremendous impact. Something as easy as changing out the knobs in your kitchen. You know, you're thinking the bling about, to the kitchen. Yeah, the bling to the kitchen. Mm-hmm. You're thinking about doing a whole new re- remodel and switching out the doors. Or you know, a lot of times people say, "Why don't I just get new doors?" And blah 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 blah. But there, there's something to be said for just either a switching out the hardware, even new hinges. And then B, just painting what you already have and getting yourself a pop of color. And you're going to save thousands of dollars. Or a pot of coffee. Or a pot of coffee. <laughs> Any, <laughs> anything you're going to say, start... get yourself a pot of coffee. Yeah, sit back and watch your knobs change and get a pot of coffee. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, I, I love I love hardware. And hardware, by the way, can be expensive. You, you have to definitely, you know, you can get inexpensive hardware. You can definitely buy previously loved yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Hardware. Yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah, it does add a lot. And then, and then, like, if you're getting into the world of sound and audio and wiring stuff, how do you hide those wires? Well, you know, you can have a company come out and drill wiring into the, your existing walls, and then you've got a patch and do all that stuff. Or you can buy crown molding and decide, you, you know, do your wire up in the corner from the wall to the ceiling. And then install crown molding to hide the wiring that way. And disguise oh, it. sneaky. See, that's a sneaky, inexpensive way Wait to a do that whole wiring that's situation. That's sneaky. I know, but that's what we're talking about here. Inexpensive, under $100 to kind of do that job where normally that would be five, 800 bucks. This is under 100 bucks. So you just kind of conceal it right there at the top of the molding. Right and the no top, one's going to see it. Put the molding right over it. Just don't nail gun or screw or nail into that wire that's up there. But that's... It's simple, easy to do. I think a great upgrade is always something in the yard, you know, and why not find a tree that's going to be looking great all the time? I don't know why you wouldn't. You know, what that's would, a good what, investment. Yeah, and what would you suggest for a tree? What, what kind, well, what, what do mean, you do? Well, I mean, it just depends, you know, where you live and, and what your uh, your sunlight is. But I think I always love um, a maple tree. Sure. I, I always love those maple trees. They add that fringy, beautiful foliage, and some that are more red. The Japanese maple isn't that great, you know. Some, I, I, I love that one. Some of them have a, kind of a chartreuse green, but that that that's a good low cost, easy upgrade. Yeah, and then another thing that I think is a, a great upgrade that's inexpensive. Say you have like a breakfast bar, mm-hmm. you know, or or uh, you know, a divider between your kitchen and your living room. It's just a shelf that comes out. What can you do to make that look fancy and and a little more expensive than it really is? Well, you can get some really beautiful corbels. Those are the things, the right angle pieces Mm -hmm. that go underneath a shelf or or a bay window, for example. And those are sold at all sorts of of, uh, stores that sell cabinetry or you Mm -hmm. can go online. There's a lot of websites. Some of them, by the way, can be pricey, too. I mean, sometimes a single corbel can go anywhere from 50 bucks to Several hundred bucks, That's depending exactly on right. how how detailed they are, but it sure adds a lot of, a, a, I think, a, a rich pop to it. And we have those corbels on our peninsula yeah. in the kitchen yeah. as an accent piece, and it looks kind of cool. Yeah, there's a there's a place called Capital Salvage that sells sort of old reclaimed corbels. Nice. And so imagine if you've got a really new breakfast bar that was just installed, but you want to have more of an antiquated look to it. That's a perfect solution. Something like old antique mm-hmm. corbels will really make a difference. Great, great investment. Mm-hmm. Right? Nothing. What about the front door? Well, I mean, listen, you can ch- instantly change the entire look of the exterior of your home by doing one thing and one thing only, and painting that's just the painting house. the front door. But doing something more about the door itself, I mean, dressing it up, like with a great door knocker, you know, yeah, that's and, right. and some really pretty brass uh, looks to it, I think. Yeah, or even taking the existing doorknob and hinges that you already have, taking the door off, removing all the hardware, getting the paint off with paint remover, and then an instant facelift to the door. Because mm-hmm. now suddenly you've got those old brass hinges that are beautiful that have been painted over a hundred times. And you've got that beautiful old thing that you might not even know you had in terms of a doorknob. Just take them off, start over, and get it all stripped. And if you don't want to do that yourself, 
There are places all over the country that strip stuff for you, very inexpensive. So I, I really like that as, a, as an inexpensive kind of remodel and rehaul of what you already have. And I do love a door knocker that has kind of a little personal touch, you know. We grew up uh, with uh, a door knocker that was a pineapple. Oh, well, yeah. hence the name <laughs> Dole. Now, did you get any of that crazy no. Dole money? Did you? <laughs> I know the you The pineapple keep, money? No. I know. My husband keeps asking. No, we're just, oh, it's all we have is the book saying that there's a family tree. That's all. But, I mean, how not? How nice to have something, whether it's your family crest or some, you know, the initial, everyone's really into letter art, you know, have a big S as the door knocker for your front door, something like right. that, that really kind of gives a, a sense of homey, fun, warm and fuzzies as you as you come to your house yeah that's great I yeah love it. E- even a mailbox a, a, an mailbox adjustment slit? in your mailbox can really kind of make your your front of your house look fantastic just by putting a new mailbox in get something that's tasteful or artistic if you want to buy a, a, a new mailbox or kind of amend what you already have by painting it creatively and you know, giving a little flair and panache to it. If you, you have will. to make sure that it, it is a government-approved mailbox. Did you know that? There are sizes and regulations. I know. I did, I did know that. Yeah. I know. Otherwise, the the postal police will come and get you, and and uh, they just might they not deliver to you. They won't deliver your mail, but somehow you'll still get your bills. That's right. You know. <laughs> now, have you seen have you seen this idea where they take an old art easel and use that to display your television? We have. That's something you can do for very inexpensive. It's gorgeous. 75 bucks. Coming up, we have more fun things to share with you. How to improve the spaces you call home. Eric Stromer, Cindy Dole. Home Wizards, that's the name of the game. And we're back in just a moment. Inch by inch, row by row. Gonna make this garden grow. All it takes is a rake and a hoe and a pea. 